Hi guys, my name is Lydia and this is Lily Wings Creative Channel. Happy Easter to you all. Thank you. First of foremost, I want to thank all my subscribers for your continuous support. May God bless you all. And if you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. So it's been a week plus that I haven't posted any video. That is because I am re-strategizing on how to carry everyone along. What I mean by carrying everyone along is if you are new in tailoring, that's if you are new in tailoring, you're just starting or you want to learn or you've been in the system and you're not getting it, you're not getting it like you've been like me, I know from experience I have been in tailoring for so long at some point I was like what is it I'm not getting anything or my patterns are not working for me because I wouldn't want a situation whereby I will draft a pattern and then sew and then I have to still make amendment after sewing no I don't want it so I had to go and work on myself like find materials do a lot of research and other stuff then finally I got what I wanted I got patterns that actually works and actually works for me and also works for everyone so this tutorials you're about to watch is how to draft a basic block pattern you can manipulate that pattern to any doubt of your choice so it's from that basic block that's the basic block that we are going to be manipulating a princess that bustier that and every form of that you can ever think of even drapes and so many other things so as we continue i'm going to keep unfolding what actually this basic block can do in one or two tutorials ahead before i now start making complex designs and what i actually intend doing now is to be making a complete outfit like i want to be making a complete outfit whereby when you follow what i do when you follow what i am showing you can get exactly what I achieve. So guys, this is a medium for you to learn. And I'm pouring out my heart to you, not withholding any knowledge to make sure that you are good in this special line. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the basic vlogs tutorials. See you guys in my next tutorials. Bye. So now I'm going to determine the size of the paper I want to use for the purpose of those tutorials. So the largest part of my body is um, the bust. So my bust is 37. I added like, I rounded it up to 40 so that I can get space to do other things as well. So 40 by 2 is um, 20. I marked out 20 on the paper like this and then I cut out the one that i don't need for this tutorials to avoid waste so after that i'm going to divide the sheet into two as you can see me doing once i'm done dividing it i'm just going to square it up with a vertical line like this so one side of this paper is the front side that's the, i'm going to use it for the front pattern while the other side is the back pattern so i'm going i'm giving it this margin where the measurement starts from from the side and this is the up margin too this is where the shoulder uh, is so now i'm going to be calculating the chest measurement because i'm going to be marking it from the shoulder chest measurement is bust divided by six plus two inches so if my bust is 37 I, add, I would divide it by 6, so that gives me 6.1 something something. Then I'm going to add 2 to that 6.1 something something to give me 8.1 stuff like that. So once I'm done with that, I'm just going to place my tape on my shoulder and then I measure the result at which is around 8.1. So that is the chest line for my bust my bust point is 10 and a half so i'm marking 10 and a half from the shoulder and also my half length is 18 so i have marked 18 as well this is it for the front pattern and for the back pattern 
I'm going to be using the same chest line measurement as the front, which is 8.1. Then for the bust point, I'm using 9 for the back. 9, please. And for my back half length, my back half length is 16 and a half. Remember that the back half length is shorter than the front half length. But in some cases, it can be the same. But So next, I'm squaring the chest line with an horizontal line. And the bust line for the front is not the same as the back. So I'm doing it separately like this. And also the half length for the front is not the same as the back. So I'm going to do it separately like this. And I go over to the back and then square the bust mesh line like this. That's 9. And then the half length, which is um, 16 and a half, I squared it up as well. For the purpose of those tutorials, I am going to be outlining this line so that I can carry every one along. So next, I'm going to be taking the shoulder measurement. So my shoulder is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I am marking 8. I didn't add any allowance, please. I didn't. So I'm going to be measuring the same shoulder measurement on the chest line so that I can get a straight line connecting from the shoulder to the chest line in this manner. On that same line connecting from the shoulder to the chest line, that's the vertical line, I'm going down by one and a half inch. Please take note, one and a half inch. And I measured my neck width to be three inches. Next, I'm going to draw a shoulder slope from the one and a half inch on the armhole line to meet the neck width like in this manner. So next, I'm going to find the midpoint from the shoulder slope to the chest line, which is around three and a half or 3.75. Then I will now go down by one inch. And that will be around 4.75 or five, depending. On this point where I marked, I will take it in by 0 0.75 inch. That's three quarter of an inch in a horizontal manner like this so once that is done i'm going to connect the new point that's the the 0 0.75 that i took in to meet the end of the shoulder slope but before i complete the armhole measurement i'll have to first of all measure out my bust my bust is 37 divided by 4 is 9.25 so i marked out 9.25 and then from that point i'm going to be curving a line to meet this 0 0.75 line that i took in as you can see me doing now next i'll be marking out my nipple to nipple measurement on the bust line and also on, I'll mark out the nipple to nipple measurement on the waistline as well. Now I'll go ahead to connect those two points from the waist to the bust like this. So once that is done, I'm now going to take the dart half half inch on the side, on each side of the nipple to nipple line. So once I'm done marking out the dart point, I'm now going to connect these two dart points to meet the nipple point at the bust line. So next, I'm going to be marking out my waist measurement. My waist is 30 divided by four is seven and a half. So I marked my seven and a half. So I am adding one inch to the waist now. This one inch is for the dart. That's what I took in for the dart. So I'm adding it up to the waist. So now I'm going to go, go ahead to connect the waist to meet the chest line. So once that is done, I'm now going to mark out my neck depth, my neck depth three as well, the same as the width three. And I'm now going to um, find a way to make it a perfect round. So I'm just going to be placing my tip on that tip. You see the intersection of the um, the two intersections. So I'm just going to be marking out three three inch like this And once I'm done marking it out in that manner, I'm just going to follow this point and then connect a perfect round 
neck on this so it seems like i have tampered with the outline i'm just going to be writing it somewhere else so that you can see it properly since i'll be cutting it off so meanwhile i will just go ahead to draft the back pattern so the shoulder is 16 divided by 2 is 8 so i've marked 8 on the shoulder line and also i'm taking the same shoulder measurement to the chest line just to get a straight line that connects the shoulder to the chest line so once i am done with this i'm going to go down on that line by one inch for the front i went down by one and a half for that but for that back side i'm going to go down by one inch please one inch now i'm going to mark out the neck width which is three inches the same as the front and i'm going to connect this to be the shoulder slope that's from the one inch to meet the neck width and this becomes my shoulder slope now on that same line that's on the shoulder slope to the line meeting the chest line i'm going to determine the midpoint on that midpoint i'll just go in by quarter of an inch remember for the front pattern i went in by three quarter of an inch but for the back though it depends for some people you may have to draw it straight like that while for some you may even need to come out with the armhole so now i am marking out the bust measurement on the chest line in order to bring my curve to the point where the breast i mean the bust measurement stops so next i'm going to be taking the nipple to nipple measurement on the waistline that's the half length for the back and also the bust line for the back as well so once i'm done with that i'm just going to connect those two marks so once i'm done with that i'm just going to apply my dart oh sorry let me just cut out this let me separate these two patterns so that you can see it seems i'm far from the camera so now i'm just going to apply my dart half half inch on both sides on this line that's the nipple to nipple line that connects the bust to the waist so now i'm giving it a back that of about half inch so this back that depends for me i have a deep back so that is why i'm trying to take it in by giving it that that while for some they have a straight back and for some they have hunchback on the case of hunchback you just have to come out instead of making it straight you just make it out you bring the waist out at the back and then take it in at the side so these are some of the important things you should consider when dealing with a customer so now i'm going to be connecting the back that to meet the chest line so once i'm done with that i'm just going to be marking out my waist measurement which is 30 by 4 is 7.5 and marking out 7.5 so after marking out 7.5 i'm going to be replacing one the one inch dart i took out that's half half by the side so i replaced the dart on the side so now once i'm done with that i'm just going to be connecting the waist to meet the armhole at the at the chest line so once that is done i'll just go ahead to mark out my neck depth that's the depth for the back that's around one inch or half inch depending on how you want your back to come out now connect it to the neck width that's the wideness of the neck so once that is done i'll just cut out my drafted pattern both the front and back i'll just cut out everything So as you can see, I didn't trim out the side for the front completely because I still have something to do with it. So now comparing the back, the back and the front side by side like this, you will notice that the front is longer than the back. That's because the front half length is 18 and the back half length is 16 and a half. So what I'm going to do now, since the back half length is 16 and a half and the front is 18, I'm just going to take the difference of the two 
that's um, 16 18 minus 16 and a half is one and a half so on the side of the front i'm going to be taking one inch down from the bust line that's from the bust line on the side of the front i'm taking it i'm taking it down by one and a half inch this one and a half inch is the difference between the front and the dark back and then i'm going to connect a line to to meet the nipple to nipple point so now i'm going to be folding this new line that i marked that's the new dart and i'm going to be taking it to meet the bust line so once i'm done with that i'm just going to blend the line to blend the line from the chest line that's on the side i'm going to blend the line because once you apply that dart the the line is going to shift so it's not going to be on the same line anymore so now i'm going to be blending it with my marker so i'm just going to be trimming out the excess while the dart is on fold so once i'm done with that i'm now going to compare the front pattern and the back pattern so you will discover that the side of the back and the side of the front will now become the same in length so that it makes it easy for me to sew it without any problem so one of the reasons of applying that to, to the side of the front is so that you can equalize the side of the front and the side of the back in order to make it easy to sew in cases where the front half length is the same as the back half length you may not be needing a side bust dart so the dart may just come at the armhole so now i am done with cutting out this pattern in cases where the under bust measurement is wider than the waist measurement i'm just going to contour it from the bust line to the under bust level by 0 0.25 inch or more depending on the difference between the under bust and the waistline this is happening on the dart leg so once i achieve that i'm now going to bring the stitch down to meet the dart leg at the waist i'm doing it for the both side but if your under bust is smaller than your waist you don't need all of this please you don't need it so now on the dart leg on the nipple to nipple point i'm going to come down by one inch or one and a half depending on the size of the post if the bust is smaller you can just go down by one inch but if it is larger you can go down by one and a half or more depending also on the side that from the nipple point i'm distancing it with one inch this is in order that when i sew this dart in the seam i mean the stitches should not be seen on top the breast point on top the bust point the same thing applies to the waist dart leg it should not be seen on top the bust point else it will just look awkward so that is why we are pushing the dart away from the bust point so now i'm tracing the front bodice block on a new sheet to cut out a, a fresh new one so this is because this one got rough while i was trying to show you some certain things so now i'm going this is the new one i'm going to be tracing out so now i'm also using the same pattern paper to draft out another block another basic bodice block I just want to show you their differences so as you can see the the one i the new one i drafted and the old one and the adjustment i make i have to apply it on the other one already i explained it on this one but i just had to cut out this one to show you a clear picture of how it looks so look at the second one now this is the main basic block before I started my explanation of contouring the underbust and all of it. So this is the main basic block that can be manipulated to do a lot of things. 
This basic block can be manipulated to do a princess that whatsoever that you want to do with it. So that's it. I didn't I didn't apply that contouring on this one. So I mean what I mean to say is that this particular one is the main basic block. So you can do some things with it. So this is the differences I wanted to show you. So this is the main basic block pattern you manipulate to suit your taste. So now I have used this pattern that I had to go away from the nipple point by one one inch both on the side that and also on the waist that. So I gave it um, half inch allowance as you can see on the shoulder, on the neck, on the armhole and on the waist. I gave it half half inch allowance except for the side. I gave it um, one inch allowance. That means I'm going to be sewing it one one inch by the side. So now, as you can see, I'm going to be doing my contouring on the under bust because my under bust is larger than my waist. That's my under bust waist is larger than my waist. So I'm going to be doing a little contouring by 0 0.25 inch, depending on the difference you have between your under bust waist and your main waist. I also cut out the back pattern. As you can see, I gave it half inch on the shoulder, on the neck, and also on the waist. But for the back, I gave it one inch. And also the side, I gave it one inch. So this one inch I gave it for the back is for the zip allowance. So I'm using one inch for zip allowance. And I'm also using one inch to stitch it at the side. So now I'm going to be marking out all the points and then connecting it so that I it can guide me when I'm sewing it. I also do the same to the side, the other side. So this is how it looks after I'm done stitching it. You can rate it. So in my next tutorials, I'm going to be attaching a peplum onto this so that we can see how it all look on a dress see you guys in my next tutorials please don't forget to subscribe share like my video and leave your comment at the comment section bye